Now, you say, well, Tom, you say these things popped up. What, uh, you know, how does it pop up? Well, all polymorphisms start as a mutation in one person, maybe, in a huge population. <clears throat> and this population, this person with a mutation, very rare, starts mating, passing on this mutation to the third generation, and all the way down farther. And if you look down here at the end, the 10th generation, about 200 years later, a million people have this. So things expand, poly, uh, mutations will expand quickly in a population, and therefore the mutation then becomes as termed a polymorphism. So a polymorphism is a mutation, but at a much higher percentage in the population, that's all. But that's how they got started. And so every one of those locations I was showing you, you can see how it expanded down into a polymorphism. So they've used this technology to start tracking you and me and our ancestors. And both physical, molecular anthropology starts us near the Rift Valley in Africa. Been no arguments of two major fields now, they both confirm each other. For the first 150,000 years, they ran all over Africa. So Africa is very heterogeneous, by the way. You'd think they would be homogeneous all just staying there, but they're very heterogeneous because they've been there longer than any of us have been anywhere else. And they have constantly, their genes are changing, therefore they're very heterogeneous. So one African Ameri uh, person in one area of Africa is gonna be quite different from an African in another part of the continent. Now, as it starts migrating, people then started, one of the first major migrations was along the coast all the way down to Australia. Another big group headed up north, up to Scandinavia. And another group then went up uh, to Iraq, Iran, to Moscow. Some of them went to Asia, some back to Europe. Others uh, followed suit five or 10,000 years later. We have groups then populating Asia, and finally, groups populating North and South America. Here it gets interesting, <clears throat> because a lot of books will really discuss a lot of interesting facts they're finding, and I'll throw out a couple for you. One is that we're finding that a lot of the uh, Jewish population that mostly originated here, and now the Ashkenazi Jews are up here, and Sephardic are over here, and there's some other places, all of the Jews have a very close link to each other, okay? And their closest relatives, or ancestors, are other people from the Middle East, Arabs. So here they are shooting each other, but there's no closer link to two groups than uh, genetically than that. The other thing are the American Indians. One of the first groups to come invade uh, North America, and it happened many, many times. It wasn't like one group walked over. It went over and over again. We don't even know how many times but it went over a period of 10, 20,000 years. And one group, the first group, came out of kind of Asia, Europe, and they had tremendous European genetic markers. And they looked more like European, Senecas, Mohegans, Cherokees. Later, uh, groups came over from the southern in, uh, India and southern China and all the way up and over into the North America. They had more Mongolian, Siberian, Asian looks, the Apaches and, and those groups out there. So, some of the American tribes here were as different from each other in language, culture, and genetics as they were from the Europeans who came over to greet them. They were really, really different. Uh, by the way, uh, my wife's, we did the National Geographic. You can get this. They have like 10 or 12 companies. You can pay a little bit of money and give them some saliva or a swab from the mouth, and they'll track your ancestry for you. And some of them will even tell you a little bit about your predisposition for disease. Now, the latter is not that accurate right now, but it kind of gives you a hint, but we don't know enough genes related to diseases yet to be accurate. But migration and ancestry is accurate. And my wife, they tracked down, and her ancestors came out, one of the first out of Africa, and went straight up north and populated peoples. We went along, and they ended up up here in, in the northern Scandinavia area. My ancestry went over to uh, Iraq, Iran, up to Moscow, and then over. And down. That was my father. He was born in Germany. Now, what's fascinating is when we did another genetic test with 23andMe, another genetic company, it turns out that my ancestry, uh, my father, really most of the ancestors are from Basque and over in Ireland because they moved over there later and not German. Uh, so there's big mixtures. And my wife, she was up here in Scandinavia, and then she asked me, she said, Tom, I'm a Kennedy, I'm from Ireland, how did I get down there? And I thought a minute, I said, Liza, I, I don't know, but one thing it could be is that you, uh, your ancestors were uh, uh, pillaging Vikings, 
running around and uh, <laughs> she didn't like that too well. But. Well, okay, but there's a lot of fascination here of the mixture. Now, uh, so what I want to summarize is migration and geographic isolation. People migrated areas were isolated, polymorphisms erupted as I showed you how they occurred, and these then they expanded and they became somewhat unique in appearance, but also metabolism, disease predisposition, drug metabolism. The environment helps this. If you go to an area and it's, you're getting selected for, you will find that that can enhance or hurt the population with that trait. And a good example, skin color. People that live in this, near the equator, as you look at the earth, as they, uh, people live away from the equator for many, many thousands of years, their skin gets lighter, 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 lighter. It's protection. If you go up north and you're still dark skinned, you don't get enough vitamin D, you're gonna be sickly in many ways, but from immune system to uh, calcium and bones, et cetera. If you move back south with light skin and live in the, in the, near the equator, you're in trouble because you're gonna get cancer, you're gonna get infections, et cetera. So you need vitamin D production, you need folate production in the skin and protection, but you gotta be careful not to get other things. So mother nature can select out fair skinned people and get rid of them in the equator. People up north, it's gonna select out and get rid of the dark skinned people because they're not gonna do as well as a light skinned person up there. It's just adaptation. Thank God we have this. You say, well, why did mother nature even do this? Adaptation is important for survival of a species. We're able to change over time, and so as the environment changes, whatever, we change with it. And it allows us and all living things to adapt to new environments. It's basically the same exact thing that causes bacteria to get drug resistance. Eventually, somebody gets a mutation that helps them survive, and they proliferate, okay? Well, a study was done just this year, or what, last year, actually, early, uh, where they took 210 people from different continents or areas, and they did a really serious genomic analysis of them, and they found that these 210 people from Europe, Africa, China, and Japan, look at the differences they started finding in just general metabolism. And they even found disease disorders where they, some people were, had nutrition uh, disruption or reproductive cancer, blood, immunological differences between them, and some had more predisposition for certain of these diseases than others. But surprisingly, the difference wasn't that great. It was more modest. What was different, really, was within a population, not between them, within each of the populations that people lived for a while, there was a bigger difference among people within it than between people in different races. Now, the traits may look different cause the environment, but not the variation within the population is the greatest. Because of this, we have differences in disease predisposition, et cetera, and now we're starting to use this because there's individualized medicine. What does this mean? Everyone in this room, I don't care if you came out of the same regions of Europe or wherever, you are very different from each other, and one of you is gonna be predisposed to diabetes, someone else predisposed to cancer, someone else resistant to cancer. You're, we're each different. It's because of wherever these polymorphisms happen to hit. And you can understand you inherit in polymorphism, so within families, it's gonna to tend to be that same way, although mom and dad can dilute that a little bit, but still, you can inherit this. We're now understanding why we're all different, and now they're gonna be able, and are doing here at Mayo and other places, looking at each of us in an individual, you don't have one type of breast cancer or prostate cancer, you have four or five types, and once they di diagnose which type you have, they can specifically treat that subtype. Very, very important. So let's, we have a couple concluding slides here, <clears throat> and then actually I have a third one. My wife says, don't just say this is it. Uh, the population uh, and individuals separated geographically and environmentally over thousands of years will display differences. Differences in how you look and differences in your metabolism. And individuals around the world do not belong to different species. The scientists now say and the anthropologists that we are variants of a species. We're too closely linked together. We only have minor genetic differences. And the best scientific support folks for all of that is that all humans can interbreed. And that is by all the definitions in biology is the same species. We are all in this room and everywhere around the world, all humans are of the same species. 
We can go on further and conclude that all humans are African and part Asian or European. It takes 1,000 to 5,000 years, 50 to 250 generations, for a given environmental trait, whether it's internal metabolic or external physical, to develop or be reversed. So if we take you and put the, you fair-skinned people in the room down into the equator and leave you there, you don't mix with the locals, within 50 to 100 generations, you're going to be start, your, and your descendants are going to start being dark-skinned colored for survival. 